Hello, welcome to another V's Cards video. My name is Veronica Chewich and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in Australia. In this video, we're going to do a pocket card and a card using a masking technique. We're doing two in 10 minutes. Yes, we're playing with the little monkey stamp set again. Why not? He's so much fun. On your screen, you'll see two cards. The left one is the, my original version and then I've stepped it up on the right and that's the card that we're doing today. Here's a quick look at the products that I'll be using for the first card. First up, I'm going to stamp birthday and that'll be the sign that the monkey will hold on the card front. And then I'm going to stamp the word happy. It's going to be right up the top where the monkey's going to have his tail swinging on one of those letters for a bit of fun. Now I just need to stamp the monkey on an angle as though he's swinging and I'll use one of the letters as a good hanging point. I'll be using stamping blends to colour in the monkey and I'll do that quickly for you. I've deliberately coloured in the monkey in a brown colour so that it kind of blends in with the word happy. This way the tones are similar and it's fairly forgiving and no need to try and mask so that the tail is around the pea properly. I'm now going over some parts of the monkey to create a 3D illusion, just shading in the outside and any bendy parts and the right side of the monkey as though the light is coming in from the left, the opposite side. Now we're up to the masking part. We're going to have a monkey which was already stamped down and fussy cut and we're going to use that as a mask. I just use some glue tack to uh, have it on the card so it's not going to move around while I'm shading using my blending brushes. It does end up moving a little bit but it's not too bad so I keep to it anyway. Yeah, I just wanted to create a more 3D effect and also wanted the birthday part to stand out a bit more by having a blue background. I'm now going to mount the card front onto the peak and pie frame using multi-purpose liquid glue and then I'm going to adhere the birthday word, the sign, onto dimensional so that it pops up. I will be adhering it to the soft seafoam card base. Obviously you can use the adhesive of your choice. If you are an Australian resident and you don't yet have a Stamping Up demonstrator, you can purchase these products from my website. The link to the list of products will be in the description below. And you have the option of copying it to your shopping cart. Thanks so much for shopping with V. I have deliberately stuck the sign out over that mounting section of the peak and pie simply because I wanted it to really pop up. And I'm going to also use some Wink of Stella to give it a bit of glitter and shine as well. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick up on that. Now for a very quick bonus card, I'm going to do a background for one of my pastel colours. Tone on tone using the Lemon Lolly ink pad onto the Lemon Lolly cardstock. And the stamp set is called Rays of Light. For large background stamps, I put the card on top of the stamp and then I get a scrap piece of paper and I press down it firmly and evenly so that it's inked nicely. I did come across a problem and that is that there was a space at the top and the bottom of the card front which, which I didn't really like. So in order to fix that up, I did trim it but turned it into um, a mounting type of card. By trimming three sixteenths of an inch both vertically and horizontally, I'm able to make the card slightly smaller and have it bordering on a basic white cardstock. So we're using a white card base instead this time and mounting on a slightly smaller piece of lemon lolly. So if I were to do it again, I would make that white cardstock slightly narrower and shorter as shown in the diagram. Now we're up to the second type of card this card is awesome if you don't have any designer series paper. You can make it yourself by stamping tone on tone or making it stand out where I have 
the side banana bit. So I've just stamped in the insert and now I'm going to stamp the card front. I'm going to mount it on a brown colour card. I wasn't very fussy about where I had stamped. You could be a bit more precise and use a grid paper for reference. I'm now going to punch some bananas on a narrow strip of cardstock and that will be attached to the inside of the card, which will also be revealed in the card front. You'll see what I mean in a minute. We are now past the halfway mark of this short video tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. You must still like it because you're still watching it, so please take a moment to like. I also invite you to write in the comments section. Perhaps you'd like to share with me what inspired you or perhaps you have some suggestions for future videos. I'd love to hear them. Finally, I ask you to please share this video. And if you're not yet a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. Every little bit you do counts to help keep my videos from being hidden away due to algorithm patterns determined by activity. Now it's time to adhere the cardstock onto the card front and the card inside. I've taken advantage, and I hope you have too, of the 15% off the Designer Series paper sale. This is only until the end of June, and there's about 13 papers to choose from. So take advantage of this great time to shop for pattern paper. Head over to my website, and I'll have that in the description below. Using a small circle punch, about an inch, I'm going to punch a semicircle out of the card edge there and then I'm going to adhere that little part onto the front so that we've got a little pocket to put our gift card inside of. Be sure to only use a thin line of adhesive on either side because you don't want to get the gift card jammed on the inside or not being able to fit in there. Now that we have adhered all the bits to our card, we're going to do the final part, that is the monkey. I'm stamping tone on tone and then I'm going to punch out the monkey. I'm also going to use some very vanilla for the face part of the monkey. Let's take a closer look at the little monkey stamp set. I've circled the main monkey, which perfectly coordinates with the hole punch. But this time I'm going to change it up and use another monkey face option. You'll notice that there are actually four face options and they are shaped a little bit differently from each other. So the one that I'm going to do doesn't perfectly match the punch, so I'm going to have to fussy cut that. So have some fun changing things up a bit and using different faces for your different monkeys. If you're just wanting the face, obviously you don't need to ink up the entire larger monkey stamp, you're just after the top part. See how the border of the other monkey face doesn't quite match the punch? This is why I'm going to fussy cut instead. Here's a question, when you're making multiple cards, do you like to make them exactly identical or do you like to change it up and move things around? Take a moment to share your preference in the comments section below. I do tend to experiment and change things up and then later on decide which one is my favourite. And sometimes it depends upon if I've made a mistake or not, because if I have, I like to use an element to disguise it or cover it up. Time to put in the gift cards and add a little bit of bling. The monkey eyes do look cute as they are stamped, but if you wanted that little bit of extra freediness, then go ahead and add some Google eyes. Be 
We are now coming to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Until then, take care and happy crafting.